All right, let's move on. We are moving to the Denver Broncos, who I feel like we all kind of liked what they did here. Oh, yeah. uh, they they went 5-11 and 11 last year. Not great. Obviously, they had to deal with a ton of injuries uh, throughout the season. They have a just absolutely fantastically potentialed skill set group. Uh, I mean, they're, they're skill players. If they live up to the potential that they have, um, you know, I think they could be one of the best teams in the league, which is why the Aaron Rodgers trade talk is so interesting because – they would immediately be uh, a contender in this conference. So uh, their needs were linebacker, edge, quarterback, running back, and safety. And here's what they did. They uh, they also took a lot of players, took a lot of shots, and I, of course, am a fan of that first-round cornerback Patrick Sertan, uh, the second out of Alabama. Uh, round two, running back Javante Williams out of North Carolina. Love that pick. Uh, interior offensive lineman Quinn Meneres out of Wisconsin Whitewater in the third round. Baron Browning, linebacker out of Ohio State in the third round. Fifth round, safety Caden Stearns out of Texas. And safety Jamar Johnson out of Indiana. Those were only 12 picks apart, but two safeties again. We'll see what happens. Round six, uh, wide receiver Seth Williams out of Auburn, who our buddy Casey that always jumps on here is a massive fan of. He said Seth Williams is the number one wide receiver in this draft. I don't think Whoa. so, but okay. Uh, <laughs> round, round seven, wow. Kerry Vincent, cornerback out of LSU. Uh, and then they also got edge rusher Jonathan Cooper out of Ohio State, edge rusher Marquis Spencer out of Mississippi State. Uh, they took dudes, and they filled holes, and I love it. I love what they did here. Yeah. Completely agree. And they, they lost A.J. Boye to free agency. He went over to Carolina. And when Boye and Bryce Callahan were healthy – for Denver last year, you weren't throwing the ball on them. Bryce Callahan gave up some like .11 fantasy points per route ran against. That was good for fourth best among left corners when he was actually playing. Now, he did get hurt, and we saw that secondary fall apart. So the thing with Denver, we were all – when they came to nine, I was like, man, this could be Justin Fields. This is probably where Justin Fields is going to go, and I think it would have been a good move. Look, people are talking about a quarterback competition between Tr Teddy Bridgewater and Drew Locke. That's not a competition. <laughs> no. Drew Locke is absolutely terrible, and I know people hate it when I bag on their players and their quarterbacks, but Drew Locke, we had a saying on the NFL show, and it was Jesus Christ Drew Locke, because <laughs> what you had was you're taking it. You'd get team totals of 15 and a half, 16 and a half, this, these juicy money numbers, and Drew Locke with all that talent, KJ Hamler, an absolute speed burner out of Penn State, Tim Patrick, uh, they had Cortland Sutton. Of course, he got hurt. They have all of these weapons, and Drew Locke couldn't hit the you know broad side of a barn. And then, of course, you have Vic Fangio punting on fourth and two from the opposing team's 35-yard line because the dude is probably the most cowardly coach in the NFL, maybe right outside of Mike Vrabel in that playoff game. We all know what happened there, and that also pisses me off. But I love what they did here. Sertan, terrific corner. I actually thought he was a little bit better than J.C. Horn. I love what they did there. Javante Williams to replace Philip Lindsay and play alongside Melvin Gordon. Everyone had him as one of their top backs, if not the second best pure running back, you know, outside of Najee Harris in this draft out of North Carolina. Love the pick. Love the guard they took. And then I love late in drafts in the sixth and seventh round. They're getting guys from pedigreed schools. Yep. Auburn, LSU, Ohio State, Mississippi State. Bring in good players who know how to win and know how to compete at the highest level. Even though they didn't take the quarterback, which I can understand the frustration of Denver fans not doing that, I loved this draft. I think they knocked it out of the park. I had them and the Chargers neck and neck in this division. I wouldn't call you crazy for saying Denver was better or the Chargers, but I think top to bottom, Denver got a bunch of players who are going to make that roster and contribute right away and make them better. Love what Denver did. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. And and I'm going to tell you that I 100% believe, call me a fool, come come the middle of June, that per Patrick Sertan pick was not the Broncos pick. Okay, That's not their selection. This is an NBA deal where he was drafted by one team, but he is going to be traded to the, to, to the, uh, to the uh, Green Bay Packers. But the Green Bay Packers want it. This guy, they called him. They said, we're going to give you three first round for Aaron Rodgers. The, they're going to make that move. Who do you want with mm. this pick? And and they said, pick Patrick. We're taking Patrick. They have no reason to get wow. fields because they believe love might be the guy. That's fine. I think that deal is done. Okay. That's my opinion. Um, but if you turn Patrick Sertan and two other guys into Aaron Rodgers, uh, this team it. might be the favorite to win the Super Bowl over their divisional uh, rivals, Chiefs. 
Um, wow. I, yeah. I think this team is more talented than the Chiefs from top to bottom Ooh. if you put Rodgers on it. I think they're a quarterback away from being really good. Uh, Javante Williams, I'm 100% with you. I think he's an unbelievable running back in their system. And this is what you do with running backs. This is why you don't pay running backs. This is why you don't draft them in the first round. You just take a young guy in the second or the third round, and you put him with your older veteran running back. And when your older veteran running back gets put out to pasture, you get the new guy, the rock, and then you just keep rotating it. Two years from now, you get another guy in the second or third round uh they 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 attack some some offensive line issues they attack the defensive problems and then i'm with you i love taking crazy athletic dudes in your late round picks and just seeing hey maybe they become something i don't know but they played at big schools against good competition and 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 if they don't make the roster who gives a shit it was a sixth or a seventh round pick it mm-hmm, doesn't matter exactly but three or four of those guys could end up actually being real legit contributors to your football team. There aren't a lot of teams that are going to have sixth and seventh round picks that would be real contributors to their football team. Yes. Uh, the, the Seth Williams pick, the Kerry Vincent Jr. pick, uh, Jonathan Cooper, uh, all of those were guys that uh, before they ended up going in this year's draft were talked about as high round guys, second, third, yep. fourth round dudes, and, and they all end up going, you know, late sixth, you know, seventh round guys. I think it was a, a, an awesome decision uh, to go out and, and take a flyer on a bunch of these dudes. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.